All right, um, my phone abruptly shut down. Um, I'm glad the first video segment was saved, but um, okay. So in my first segment, I was talking about the Yonkin gubernatorial win in Virginia and what the implications here are. So to summarize, what I was saying is that this is a really portends very bad uh, news for the Democrats because, like I said, Virginia is a democratic state in general, or at the very least, it's a neutral state. And the fact that Youngkin won means that the average person, the average American, is not receptive to democratic ideals, namely in the realms of cultural issues, principally the critical race theory, and the heavy-handed response to the pandemic. Okay, moving on to the second topic, uh, climate change. So climate change, um, like I said, it used to be a niche issue. Um, Al Gore was, a, was closely affiliated with it at the turn of the millennium, and he was mocked for it <laughs> among both parties, right? Now it's a mainstream thing. Um, now the Democrats have fully embraced it. I mean, I think uh, that the, uh, Bernie Sanders probably, possibly played a role in this in his 2016 primary run. Um, so, uh, and, and, and the rise of the progressives in general, the fact that they're a lot more popular now than they used to be 10, 15 years ago. They have their own caucus, they have their own prominent spokespersons, such as AOC and the squad and all that stuff. So, um, and of course now you have Build Back Better, which is Biden's initiative, which includes uh, many, many millions of dollars, if not billions, probably billions of dollars, I should say. Um, I say many millions, it's many billions on um, climate change initiatives. So question, uh, do I consider climate change a major threat to humanity? And the answer is that in the past, I did. In the past, 10, 15 years ago, I did become convinced based on what I was reading. I was educated, I've been educated for my entire life. So based on what I was reading, um, and by the way, let me just preface that by saying that I was, in the past, I have been leaning democratic. I should say I had been leaning democratic and I switched. In the last four or five years, I am now, I could, I could pretty much say that I'm a conservative now. But um, so, so yeah, so that's also a factor. But let me justify why I switched on this, on this topic. And the answer is, uh, number one, the we, we, meaning scientists, scientists know that this globe has been, um, has been swinging back between warming and cooling for a long time now. We're talking here millions of years, okay? There have been ice ages and warm ages, okay? Everyone knows this. And so it's a cyclical thing. It just goes in a cycle. The planet cools and the planet warms. And so that's the first thing to note here, that even though it is true that the human hand does play a role in accelerating this phenomenon, it is not true that if not for humans, this would not happen at all. That's not true. So that's the first lie, or I should say the first omission that climate change um, advocates are omitting. Okay, so again, so to repeat, this is a thing that happens more or less for the, I should say for the most part, the climate would be warming regardless. Now, it is true that our industrial activity accelerates this process. And so the argument could be proffered that, uh, that left to its own devices, it would be gradual and we would have time and ability to adjust. But if we accelerate it so fast, then we would not be able to adjust. Um, and this doesn't ring true either because over the last two, 300 years, our technological progress has been so incredibly rapid. The type of lifestyle that we live now and the type of lifestyle that we lived 200, 300 years ago, even 100 years ago, is just so radically different. I mean, if you're really an alarmist when it comes to radical change, you know, 
then uh, does this not concern you? I mean, we can adapt on all these measures, right? We can adapt on, 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 on all this exposure to radioactive waves in the form of Wi-Fi and whatnot and all this other uh, radio waves that we have. And they're only about 100 years old, by the way, all of this, 150 years old. I mean, I would venture to say that our exposure to all of these um, uh, electromagnetic radiation that is going on around us is far more invasive and pervasive than the potential uh, for climate change to disrupt our lives um, in the next thousand years. That's what I would say. I mean, in terms of adaptability, right? If you're talking about how humans can potentially adapt, I mean, if anything, I would argue just the opposite. Because our technology is advancing so rapidly, we will find a way to adapt to climate change, right? So to me, the bigger threat is the very rapid advance of technology itself, which could destroy us. Um, talk about nuclear capability. If you have one major accident in the next thousand years, it could almost literally, it could wipe out humanity. I mean, it's not likely to wipe out completely, but it could cause such a major catastrophe that it would eclipse anything else that could possibly even be dreamed of that could happen to humanity, right? I mean, other than I'm talking about like a collision, like a, like a one in a billion year collision between, between stars and planets, etc. But other than that, I mean, a nuclear disaster would be, uh, would be crazy. It would be the worst thing that could possibly happen. And it would dwarf anything else. So anyway, bottom line is that I'm just not convinced that this very, very small change in climate um, from uh, you know, the warming of the, of the planet, I don't think that this is going to be a major issue. So there's, now, should we do absolutely nothing about it? No. I, 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 um, I applaud initiatives that are intended to, uh, to promote green energy and to reduce our footprint and to reduce the burning of carbon fuels. I, I support all that, but it has to be done within reason. It has to be done um, moderately without disrupting our lives um, too much. And, and again, this alarmism, I don't think is supported, which brings me to number, topic number three, which is why I'm, I reject the uh, Build Back Better initiative in general. Now, the individual items on that bill, um, believe it or not, although I'm a conservative, I actually have nothing against them per se. I mean, if you're talking about, let's say, universal pre-K, uh, government support of education, um, a dental plan for seniors, and you know, uh, climate change uh, spending, right? Green energy, all of that stuff. All of this is laudable. There's nothing there that I would say, oh, this is ridiculous. We should definitely not be spending money on it. Like me, meaning we as a society, right? It's not worth it as a society to spend money, and hence for the government to to take the lead on this. I would not say that. The real issue that I have with that spending, rather, is that we don't have the money for it. <laughs> Plain and simple. If we think honestly, if we assess our financial situation in a very honest way, we're already in debt to the tune of tens of trillions of dollars. All of this money has to, A, be paid back, or B, cause major, major economic hardship and economic turmoil if and when we default on our debt. So it's one of the two. It's either we're borrowing with the intention that our children will pay it back, which is incredibly immoral, or we're borrowing, or even worse, we're borrowing with the intention that we were never gonna pay it back. One way or another, this is just not advisable, it's immoral, and it should, and I cannot support it. It's just ridiculous. Um, if anything, what we should be doing is, now that we're climbing out of the pandemic, we should act financially responsible again, which is, okay, so we borrowed a lot of money during the pandemic. Supposedly it was necessary, whatever. I disagree with that too. But uh, okay, whatever you think it was necessary. What, you know, I'm not going to litigate the sins of the past, okay? There's a lot of things I disagree with what our government and what our society has done in the past. But right now we are where we are, and what we need to do is pay back our debt, even though... Uh, much of this debt was accumulated in, in sin, meaning we should never have spent that money. But nevertheless, we owe it. 
and we need to pay it back. And so to spend even more and to increase, to dig ourselves in, into an even bigger hole is just incredibly irresponsible. So again, so all of these initiatives, they're on paper, they look great, but they're not justified financially. That's the biggest issue. So, um, so yeah, so like I said, um, we just can't afford this. So, so tying back to the second point, which is about climate change. So climate change is a great, great idea, but how much do you want to spend on this when we don't have the money? When we don't have the money. Now, it would be a whole entire different thing if we had a surplus and the economy was kind of sluggish, right? Then, oh, now it's, oh, it makes a much, now it makes a lot of sense. So you're taxing people to create a whole new industry, a whole new sector in the economy that would stimulate things and would, would be exportable to other countries because they eventually would want green energy, renewable energy as well. And um, so it stimulates the economy. A, B, it's affordable. It's an affordable investment, so it makes sense. But, but that's not the situation we're in. We cannot afford it, is A. And B, um, and B it's um, we don't need a stimulus to the economy right now. If anything, it's actually the opposite, which is that people are voracious consumers right now and they can't get what they need and what they want because our response to the pandemic um, has slowed down the economy to a great, to a great deal, to a great extent. Um, you know, the ships are not docking, they're not unloading, a lot of people are not working, et cetera, et cetera. And now they want to fire people for not getting the vaccine, so it's going to get even worse. So bottom line is that, um, so to reiterate, to recap, so I'm against all of the spending mainly because we cannot afford it. It would be a whole entire different matter if we had a surplus, then I would say, okay, let's come up, you know, what, what, what do we want to spend the surplus on? Okay. But we don't have a surplus. The argument that we're going to tax the rich is just, it's not realistic. It's a, it's a pie in the sky. It's, it's a, it's an ivory tower. Uh, kind of a theory. It doesn't work. And in, in practice, the rich always, they always get away with it. They always find loopholes. It's never, you can never, and besides, the amount of, of spending that they're proposing is just so enormous. It's impossible. You know, even if you tax the wealthy, even if you do all sorts of taxation, you're still not going to cover all that plus repay the debt. So, you know, really what's happening here is that um, the, what the Democrats are doing is the opposite of the uh, conservative argument that used to go starve the beast, right? Starve the beast was that, um, that, that we shouldn't tax to force the government not to spend. That was the argument of the, uh, that used to be a Republican argument, right? Um, so the Bush tax cuts, for example, right? So Bush was a spender, but the idea go, uh, goes the reason the conservatives support it is because eventually the government will be forced to stop spending. Right? Um, so the Democrats have the opposite approach. Their approach is, hey, um, we're acting irresponsible anyway, so we might as well spend the money on the, <laughs> on the working class, right? That's their, their, their attitude. But, um, but no, I, I do not support it. I do not support either one. We should be financially uh, balanced. We should be... Um, accountable for every dollar that we spend and um, that's just the uh, the proper moral and correct way of living um, on an individual level on a collective level on a governmental level on a federal level on all levels um, of the uh, society this is how it should be so thank you for watching and have a great day